I've had a handful of people ask me about this deload week that we're in the middle of, and I wanted to do a video explaining um, why we're doing that, what the point of it is, but I realized that before I could do that, I needed to talk about some other things, and and, and this video is going to really, this is going to actually explain the point of and the purpose of every single effective training program that there ever has been and ever will be. Um, what we're doing when we're training is subjecting the body to a stress and that body's gonna, or then your body's gonna adapt to that stress and get better at recovering from it and dealing with it in the future. That's due to a, a um, syndrome called the General Adaptation Syndrome, or GAS. Now, what happens there, so we go through a couple different phases. The first phase is the alarm phase where the, where the stress gets introduced to the body and we have some quick um, initial responses to that to help us survive um, and, and, and deal with that stress. So this, become, this in, in our setting and, and really why it's happened as we've evolved over time is that fight or flight response to survive or flight. So in other words, if you are out in the wild and a tiger comes chasing you down, you're going to need to run away from that tiger or think quickly or, or, or just respond to that stress. So your heart rate's going to go up, you're going to breathe faster, and your, pre your blood pressure is going to go up, among some other things. But basically the point of it is to give you the, the, the tools that you need to respond to that initial stress. So heart rate, increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, increased respiration, among other things, but this, this relates a lot to what we're doing as well. So like in a workout, three, two, one, go, all these things start to happen so you can deal with that initial stress. Now once this, once this is removed, removed, you go back to homeostasis or, or just normal, uh, normal, blood, normal blood pressure, normal heart rate, normal breathing, returns to normal. Now the next phase, if this continues to happen, if this alarm phase continues to happen, like for our purposes, if you if you work out on Monday, you come back on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, these things continue to happen, your body's going to go through the resistance phase and make adaptations to deal with that stress in the future. So, adaptations. To deal with in future. For our cases, if, if for example you went out and you, you ran a mile on Monday, you ran a mile on Wednesday, you ran a mile on Friday, your body then would go through some adaptations to make you better at running that mile. So in the following week, you'd probably be able to run it a little bit faster. Um, this is going to depend, This is going that, that conversation could go down a real long rabbit hole, but depend on the individual, how hard they go, um, and different things along those lines. But just know that your, your body's going to make adaptations to what it's subjected to. Now, this is good. This is awesome. This is kind of the point of training. Um, however, if the body endures that stress for too long, or it doesn't give itself enough recovery time, or it's not... It's not a lot, you know, you're not sleeping enough, you're not eating enough, um, you have other outside stresses, and this is in regards to training in the gym, you have other outside stresses like work, family, um, just things along those lines, it's going to go into this, it's going to eventually get into this exhaustion phase, where your body's just going to end up saying, screw it, I quit, we're not, we're not, at, we're not adapting anymore. So, um, too much stress. Stress for too long. Body quits. Quits. And you go into what we call like overtraining. You get sick, injured, tired all the time. You start to get worse or, or reverse all your gains. Uh, and this is where we want to stay out of. So, like I said in the beginning, this, this is a description of every effective training program ever. So if you're gonna start at your baseline here, 
if this is your baseline, you're sitting on the couch or, or wherever, you're, wherever your baseline is, we're gonna add a new stress. So let's say this is your baseline here, we're gonna add this stress here. You're gonna do your workout, we're gonna keep it pretty light um, as far as weights go. We're gonna keep you, you, you held back in the conditioning part. So you make this adaptation here to deal with this stress. The following week, we're gonna do a little bit more weight, a little bit longer in the workout, go a little bit harder maybe, and adapt to that stress. Third week, so week one, two, week three, we go a little bit more. Week three, Ad adapt to that. Now, in most studies, and, and kind of a generally accepted idea amongst strength coaches and, and in the industry, is this is where things start to, like, you're on that border. You start to get into that overtraining phase, and your body just needs a, a, a what we call a deload week. Um, so we'll take it a little bit easier. Like this week, we're doing you know seventy percent, um, somewhere around there. And I've got I've given you some some leeway on that percentage to say, all right, let's back it off a little bit this week. So and then on week four, we say, all right, let's take it back down. Not maybe to baseline, but just less. So it gets an opportunity to say, okay, we're fine. We're not being chased by tigers anymore. We can relax. And then so week four. Which is a four, we're right currently in the fourth week of our training cycle, so this is why this is where this deload week idea comes in. And the following week, we go back to it. Week five, we go a little bit more. Probably a little closer to here, but week five. And we go week six, a little bit higher. Week seven, a little higher. Oops. Week seven, a little higher. And then on week eight, what are we gonna do? Back this down a little bit again. Give yourself some time off. Take it easy. Allow your body to recover. Both, and that's both mentally and physically. Um, some of the takeaways, and I'll, I'll move on from this, but some of the takeaways that I want you guys to, to understand from here is that stress is a very broad term. It's not just training stress. You are, you're, as an individual, you have a ton of different stresses that go on in your life. And the way your body is going to adapt and cope with that stress depends on all the other things that you're, you're, you're allowing it to do and, and subjecting it to. So stress can be work, gym, family, lack of sleep, eating shitty food, drinking all the time, um, yeah, and coping with that stress and allowing your body to recover is really the opposite of this stuff. So less work, which is hard for most people to do, and that's why you know professional athletes are what they are because, or, or, or are, you know, they reach that that level where they're allowed to just focus only on training, and that's work. They can reduce their amount of work. So the for the majority of us that are working 40, 50, 60 hours a week. That isn't, we can't turn that down. And that's why most of us aren't professional athletes. Our priorities, they have to be work so we can provide for our families. So you can't really turn some of that stuff down. If you can, great. You can't really, I mean, you probably can turn your family down a little bit, but that might not be good for your, your overall family life. You send them away for a week. Um, but less work, less alcohol or no alcohol, better food. Better food intake, adequate food intake, adequate, good food, or uh, like proper, proper food intake as far as like macronutrient profiles, like the correct amount of protein, correct amount of fat, correct amount of carbohydrates, that stuff will allow you to recover. And sleep is a major one. If your training is hard, as a lot of, a lot of the people are in here, are eight to 10 hours is minimum. And that's, most people are not getting that. So if you're not getting eight to 10 hours of sleep, that means that you need, you can't train as hard. So if you're the kind of person, regardless of whether you say, oh, I don't need that much sleep. Yeah, you do. You're just used to not having that much sleep. So if you're like, for example, for a sport athlete in here and they're working out an hour and a half, five or six days a week, and, and possibly the, most of the people in our sport program are pretty active outside of this as well, you need a lot of sleep. And if you're not going to sleep that much, then you can't, you've got to cut some stuff out. 
And so that's my next, my other takeaway from this is you got to train as an individual, as you. You got to know that just because, especially I see this a lot with, with, um, with Facebook and Instagram and stuff is you, you get a glimpse into what, what professional athletes are doing. And you, and, and the takeaway from that for a lot of people is that, you know, that, okay, well, Rich Froning is training six days a day or six times a day, lifting heavy, doing this and that. That's because he can't. And he, I, I guarantee you, he's sleeping 10, 12 hours a day, eating perfectly. And all he's doing is training. Um, so you got to take that, that into consideration and know that, you know, if you're a person that does work 60 or more hours a week and you're only sleeping six hours a night, you've got to understand that doing like, for example, a sport program is probably not for you. Um, or you got to recognize that, you know, training five days a week is probably not for you. That's actually, pro that's, pu that's putting you into more harm. And, and uh, to continue on another takeaway is that this resistance phase isn't always a positive, as we're going to say, a, a positive adaptation. If you start to go into this exhaustion phase, or if you start to like touch on that exhaustion phase from time to time, your body thinks it's under like in in trouble, in serious trouble. And so body fat stores start to go up. Um, you start sleeping less because your body's on in, on alert all the time. Um, and so recognizing that you know in your in your thermometer of life, if this is your thermometer here, and you start you know this is your this is baseline. And you start to go up from there, you know, this is work adds this much, this much stress in there. Um, family adds this much stress in there. You drink two or three times a week, this much stress in there. Training a couple times a week could add this much stress in there. But if you start training five or six days a week, you go out here and you blow up. And things start to go really south, fast. And the worst part about this phase is that it's really, 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 really hard to come back from. Depending on how far you dig that hole, it can be months, months and months at a time. Um, so our goal in this, our goal in training and our goal in, in, in life is to, is to, to keep this with, in check. And so keeping in mind all these things is, is paramount to what you're doing in the gym and outside of, outside of the gym. Or you're not really doing this for health. And even if you're doing this for sport, you're still not benefiting you in the long run. So hopefully that helped. Oh, to bring it back to my initial point of this deload week is that, so these are, I schedule these into our programming every fourth week. Now, whether or not that fits in your program, you know, maybe it's appropriate for you to take a deload week a week too, because you know, on these, on week, these weeks back here, you train, 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 you're out of town here. Cool, take a deal week here, great. Train, train, same thing. Or if you feel particularly beat up, if you feel like you're on the, if you feel like your, your thermometer's getting up here, take a couple of days off. Um, eat better, sleep more. Just do, you gotta understand, and I'm, I understand that it's, it's not necessarily, that's kind of what I'm here for, so, and it's not necessarily always obvious. So that's what, I, use me, come talk to me, see, let's talk about what you're experiencing and where you need to make, make some changes. Um, and finally, the whole idea of, of more is better and you always have to be training hard is insane. It's one of the worst things I think that, that Facebook and Instagram have, have instituted upon how people train and what they're doing. Because especially this time of year, everyone goes from zero to 60 overnight and they go totally bananas and they think that if they do it they're going to look like the people that are doing it on on Facebook or Instagram and it's not the, that's not the case most of the time when you see videos or you see what people are training like they're you know they're they're doing it because they know they're on camera or especially if you pay attention to if you watch any sort of like boxers or fighters they don't train that hard year round they train you know, they go into a fight camp and they do six or eight weeks really, really hard. And then the rest of the year, they kind of just try and maintain. So when you see those videos where people just go and ink, they're killing themselves in the gym, that's either A, not reality, B, they're on steroids, or C, um, they're going to break down. And it's just, that's just the way it is. That's the reason they have, and, you know, most sports, they have an off season to allow people to recover. So the gym 
When you're in the gym, you need to have your off season. And now that's not a free pass to like go nuts six months out of the year, nine or 12 or 10 or 12 months out of the year, and then come back in January and go, go hard at it for a month. You gotta, you know, you still gotta make your adaptations and make your, you know, you gotta train harder and you gotta make good positive changes. But every once in a while, you gotta tone it down a little bit. So hopefully that answers some questions. If you have any further or want some clarifications, shoot me an email or text or come get me in the gym or post, some, post it to the comments um, on this Facebook page. And uh, I think it'll be, it'll be benefit for everybody.